What's up guys? This is Steve. Welcome back to another episode of Get Game Smart. Uh, we are once again on the PBE again today and this time we're actually playing some Hyper Roll. So Hyper Roll is the new game mode that's rolling out with set 5.0 and it is super super fun guys, super addicting. Um, the gameplay, it, it, it takes less than 20 minutes to decide a game and it's all the fun of TFT without the stress and long game times. Um, yeah, super fun. Anyways, we high roll a Cavalier uh, Hecarim 2, uh, which is sweet out of the orb. Um, and yeah, it's just a fast paced game, so I'm actually going to be having a guide coming out a little bit later this week detailing sort of when to roll um, and things of that nature and just helping break down the game. But some things you guys should know is that there's no uh, passive interest income in this game, so. Um, feel free to roll your gold down way more earlier and way more frequently than you usually would uh, As well as it's a super aggressive game. You only have 20 health to start the game So it's all about slamming items getting your strongest board um, Straight out the gates. We are really fortunate here and we're able to get uh, a level 2 uh, Hecarim as well as a level 2 Kled so that gives us the 2 Cavalier which is like a huge bonus damage reduction um, so we're able to get a really strong board out early, slam the I Iconic Ionic Spark, Iconic Spark, who knows. Um, it's still a pretty good item. Uh, as far as what items are going to be the best, it's, it's still undecided as the meta shakes out. Um, I'm not going to focus too hard on, on compositions and, and what to play, what units to play, because this is still on the PBE where things are being updated basically every day. We are able to pick up the Sejuani that gives us three Cavalier bonus, which is, yeah, 25% damage reduction, but it's doubled at the start of combat for like three seconds or something, uh, and every time they get a, a kill reset. So that actually has a, a fair bit of uptime, uh, just because they're pretty constantly killing stuff. Like Hecarim gets a lot of kill participation with his, uh, with his ultimate, which is just like an AOE heal damage thing. Um, similar to his W in League of Legends. Uh, but I am starting to hold on to Forgotten units as well. I'm thinking about playing Forgotten this game, so I've got the Vein and the Thresh there. So Forgotten units have a stacking AD and AP, or like so rather they get bonus AD and AP, um, a buff, and that's multiplied by the number of shadow items equipped on a Forgotten unit. So uh, I've currently got the shadow item, the Titanic's Revenge shadow item on the Kled right there. Um, I, at some point I should switch that over pretty soon, I believe, uh, just so I can get the Forgotten buff on, but uh, the two-star Kled is getting a ton of value out of it too right now. Yeah, Hyper Roll's really fun though, guys, because you don't have to manage your aim econ like at all. Um, and it just allows you to kind of like do the fun part, which is like rolling for, for your units and stuff and like finding what you want to find and like hitting. Um, and it guarantees that you get to the late game, like every game pretty well. And yeah, it, it feels really, really good. So, um, I'm definitely going to recommend everybody check out Hyper Roll when it comes out live. And I, I'm thinking it's not going to change too much from, from how it currently is on PBE. I'm, I'm kind of hoping not because it, it feels really good in its current state. Maybe there's a few few tweaks. I think the biggest changes that are going to happen are uh, going to be like balance changes into what's actually strong right now. Um, but yeah, if you've been playing on the PBE, you know that the that there have been balance changes like every day. So that's that's not really something that we that we should be like planning around. Like how are we gonna like like sure you should be thinking like the first week this hits what what are you going to be playing kind of thing and and that's important but we're still a few weeks from it killing live so we do pick up a spatula here and one thing i am going to say is that uh spatulas are really really good so not only do we get a spatula we get a shadow spatula from the armory directly afterwards so spatulas are, are like really good in this set because you don't have chosens so you like in order to get the flexibility to get further into these traits like you need spatulas um you'll need spatulas to get hellion 7 and stuff like that uh and abomination 5 like the the high-end traits like if you're going all the way vertically down a trait you're almost always going to need a spatula so spatulas are super important but spatulas in um in hyper roll even more so because i i found personally that when you're able to get a fawn that almost guarantees like a top two um and when you get a dark fawn well i don't know 
it's, it's honestly my first time ever getting a Dark Fawn, but it's pretty nuts because every, like, we're at level 6 here, and we have uh, 8 units out on the board. Like, we're, like, we're really early on in this game, and we just have 8 units. Like, I have no idea. I, I'm sure that you could make a way better board than what is on my bench, but I was so overwhelmed when I was just told I could put out all of the units, basically. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely was a little bit dizzy playing this game. D definitely didn't use it super optimally, but hey, I'm just a scrub in that exclusive beat blue tier of, of Hyper Roll. Hyper Roll ranking is also going to be different from the regular league ranking, or the regular TFT ranking, I should say. Um, don't really know what it's going to be. It's, we've currently got colors. You start in gray and then green. I'm currently sitting in blue and I think it's like orange or something next. I, I, I don't know. Um, or like like yellowish, beige. <laughs> you, you get slightly warmer colors the higher you rank up, I guess. Um, yeah, this dark font is absolutely nuts though, guys, because I have now got all of my forgotten out. A, a fun tidbit is that because the dark font is... A shadow item um, I actually rather than having my fawn on the bench like you would 99% of the time in set 4.5 I actually have it equipped to give a, a stacking buff to the rest of my forgotten units um, I also just hit a really really early Hecarim 3 I've got my Hecarim fully itemized I, I don't think that these are the best items for Hecarim I, I, in fact I like know they're not but I think that these are pretty good items and in hyper roll it's more about getting your items out there um, and securing like every win that you can basically especially now that I have the dark fawn if I lose I'm going to be losing 8 health and uh, In a couple rounds, I'm going to be losing 12 health per turn. So uh, just because the damage you take is doubled With the dark fawn, so it, it's definitely a double-edged sword and I'm, I'm I think uh, I think in regular TFT I might actually not slam a dark fawn that often we'll see like it sounds pretty strong but it would like really depend on my composition like if i, if I was thinking back in like 4.5 terms um if i was playing eight brawlers for example i don't think i would slam a dark fawn because i know that after stage five or stage six i'm not going to win anything and that just is going to like accelerate my bleeding out if i was playing something with like a really strong uh power curve later on like a like a like something that scaled very hard, for example, then a Dark Fawn might make a, a lot of sense of the slam. But I think it's going to be a, a situational item despite being super, super strong, which I think is great. And I think that there should be items in the game that are strong, but situationally. Um, I, I think that the team, that the Riot team's done a very good job in that aspect of balancing the game. So yeah, because I'm, I'm currently playing with nine units here in, in round seven, um, I have got Verdant in as well. So, Verdant, I think, is actually going to be, like, the hidden OP tech. Oh, I don't even know if it's that hidden. I think anyone playing on um, the PvE was probably someone that was higher elo and, and knew how good QSS was. But Verdant is basically, like, an AoE QSS for, like, the... Uh, it's like a... I guess it's like a Zeke's or a Chalice of QSS, which I think is a really neat mechanic and is just going to be really good for for your carries. And I think that QSS is going to get built a lot a lot less frequently as a result. We actually get Verdant 3 in as well, which is, or if we're thinking about it, yeah, with with how like important it is that I keep winning, I wanna just like keep playing the strongest board that I can. So I have been doing a lot of swapping out and a lot of aggressive rolling. Like Hyper Roll is the name of the game, guys. You, if, if you're gonna be playing Hyper Roll, you're gonna be rolling hyper aggressively um, if you wanna win because you only have 20 health, like I said. Uh, you can at a at most lose like six rounds in a row or seven rounds in a row, and then you're then you're out. Um, so yeah, there's no real lost streak strategy. I think that draconic or whatever is going to be super super bad in hyper roll. Um, I think that hellion like hellion in in the first like four rounds or whatever is going to be good, but I think after that might fall off in hyper roll. Um, because I think unless you get the spat and an early Teemo, I think that Hellions really has like a big mid-game uh, slump. But, and I think that you might get punished for that in this game mode. Anyways, um, I've got no reason to econ, so we are at level 8 here, and I'm just continuing to roll down all of my gold. Uh, uh, 
a fun tidbit that I, I could be making better use of, but I think I still want to embrace the potential for the Mr. 100 here, is that I could actually be buying this Teemo in my shop, um, and I could be selling it. So the Teemo, I think, only does one damage to me, despite the, the fawn, uh, the dark fawn, but you can sell the Teemo as well for gold, and uh, Hyper Roll is very, like, especially at this point when there's only three people left in the game and, and one of the people just beat me um which means that i have to like really try to improve my board because if i play that person again i'm dead with this dark fawn um then i should have been buying these teemos and selling them for gold so that i can keep rolling uh because they that would be exchanging life for gold so um it doesn't matter how much life i have at this point because one more loss and i die i should have bought that teemo oh well uh, yeah, we are continuing to improve our board. We get the six forgotten out, which is huge, um, as well as we get the Darius out there. Uh, we're running night three, which is bad. Yeah, we're, 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 we're running like a pretty bad board in all honesty. Like we're not using all of our techs. That, that looks better actually. Um, but still we are able to just kind of run over people because Dark Fawn is, is pretty good. This guy has hit his kale too already, uh, but he's got no items on it, so. Unfortunately, that's not gonna hold up to us. Finally, we're starting to do the, the Teemo selling here, which is good because we hit a, quite a few things in our final roll downs here. Hitting the Draven 2 is huge. We've got a Risk Thurster and GA on him. I think Risk Thurster is the best item in the game right now. Um, it's the single best AD item, and I hope that. I kind of hope it hits live in this condition because Bloodthirster was so bad in 4.5. Uh, that it's nice to be using these components um, But yeah risk thirster and draven 2.0 does a ton a ton of work So that's definitely gonna be fun um, And I, I think it has a chance of hitting live in a similar condition like this is post Darius nerf um, It wasn't a very big Darius nerf or not Darius draven. Sorry. I've been talking about draven this whole time uh, The the yeah, this is post draven nerf Draven's using the Risk Thurster, um, yeah, he's he's really strong, and I, I think it's going to hit live in a pretty similar condition. He might get nerfed again, but uh, he, he's just a good item holder because of his because of his passive giving you bonus AD basically. And yeah, we are actually able to knock out the guy who beat us last time because we had improved our board enough in the late game rolling. So. That's a first look at Hyper Roll, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Cheers.